My name's Richard Espley, and I'd like to talk about this item from the archive of Reginald Arthur Rye. Reginald Rye was appointed librarian to the University of London in 1906 and was only the second person to hold that position after his predecessor resigned acrimoniously after a mere two years. Rye remained as librarian until 1944 when he was forced to retire due to ill health. Rye had been described by one of his colleagues as a born librarian and his father, William Brenchley Rye, had been a librarian before him in the British Museum Reading Room, what is now the British Library. It is almost certainly because of his father's connection with the British Museum that Rye became a passionate amateur Egyptologist and left at the library not only a collection of books on Egypt, but also a small archive of notes, documents and photographs, including this booklet. This carefully decorated pamphlet contains three samples of mummy cloth, and they have a strong argument to being some of the oldest man-made items in the library's collections. There are three small samples, one with no provenance whatsoever, one from a mummy unwrapped from the collections of University College London in 1889. Perhaps the most interesting sample is this very small piece of cloth which Rye describes as saturated with spices and bitumen. I'll refrain from explaining how many of my colleagues, or for that matter I, have been able to resist bending over the page to sniff this 2,000-year-old piece of cloth to see whether those spices are still discernible. This mummy was unwrapped in 1875, one year before Rye was born, so I think we can safely assume that his father preserved this souvenir for him. It was unwrapped in Stafford House in Southampton Row by E. A. Wallace Budge, who would later become the keeper of Egyptian and Assyrian antiquities at the British Museum. What is perhaps most interesting about this sample is that the mummy and its case were given to the Museum of the Royal College of Surgeons for safekeeping. And in May 1941, along with two-thirds of the entire collection of the museum, it was entirely destroyed during an air raid. Interestingly then, this may be the only fragment of the mummy of Nebset left in existence. So in this one instance, an amateur, gentlemanly Egyptologist looking for souvenirs with a pair of scissors may actually have performed an important act of preservation.